This is Clear Out the Vents. Get it at otfi.com slash vents. They had to clear out the vent, so they were using the air thing. Mm, that's how and I that's what I call it, too. And air goes out this way. way. <laughs> like, just look at the arrow. Just look at the arrow. Oh, my God. This is so crazy. Like, I just it left it. It goes one way. Just look at the arrow. <laughs> my baby says that she don't know. I explained it all. Enjoy this. Da, 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 da. Mm, flipping the bird. Yeah. And uh, they had that didgeridoo solo that went like, yeah. yeah. Flipping the bird. <laughs> you have to clear out the back. Ladies and gents, you got clear out the fence. And by that I mean blow a ventriloquist. Line of the night. I can't believe that we we're gonna award for the first time ever the line of the night 15 minutes before the show fucking starts. <laughs> oh hell! It's got to be go time for the show dedicated to the uh, destruction of the internet. One beautiful piece at a time. My name is Brian Brush, and I am live in Orlando, Florida. Joined, as always, by my BFF and OAK is J.R.Y. Justin Robert Young. How the hell have you been over this last week, sir? Holy crap, Brian Brushwood. Uh, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is a wild, uh, wild time, man. We got a lot of stuff going on. You're down in Orlando. Uh, I'm gonna be out at a uh, uh, TwitchCon in in 48 hours. It is just uh, wild times, man. Wild times. So, okay. So, what are you expecting from TwitchCon? And like, on the one hand, you and I have have swum in some DragonCon waters, some some Nertacular waters. We expanded out to to Scoops Fest and so on. Um, are you confident that that you know just uh, TwitchCon is just another mini boss to defeat, or are you intimidated because you're about to step on stage at the big show? Uh, I don't think it's either of those in particular, but it is definitely uh, something. You know, I talked about this on the on the jury show earlier today that like I'm I'm nervous, man. I almost didn't go. I almost I almost just like totally pulled out uh, at the last minute and was like. Like, man, I don't know, because like it, it's weird. We, we we we've built our own uh, our own land. Right. And uh, then when the time was right, decided it was uh, time to get a passport again and, and come to America. Uh, and that was what uh, Twitch is to us kind of now as we've reestablished our community and it, it has grown and will continue to grow here on this platform. But uh Man, it's a lot like going to like a new high school and everybody knows all the cool things to do and knows not to get the meatloaf. And now I got to sit down and try to not get a boner because I'm nervous. And it's just uh, it's weird. Uh, all of your life is high school. And the sooner you realize that, the less you'll be surprised when you're 34 years old. I am so glad to hear you say that. And I, I'm going to ask this question, and I mean it almost rhetorically, because I suspect you and I are of exactly one mind in this. I suspect that you and I both feel like this is the way your entire life should feel. You should never feel like you're king of your domain. You should never feel like you've got it figured out. You should all, if you ever find yourself in that situation, it means you're not pushing yourself and it means like you might as well just calcify and get old and become the guy who is asking, why aren't you playing Creedence Clearwater Revival? It's the best music. Everybody knows that. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I don't know why they, stopped, why they kept making music. They should have stopped the music making as soon as <laughs> CCR went away. <laughs> and by the way, you and I, I'm sure, uh, me more than you, uh, because I got a, a few years on you, but it's like, it's weird to watch people that you've always thought are savvy and smart and funny and hip and watch them like, oh, you haven't changed your routine in 15, 20 years. And you're still, oh, you're still making references to that late 90s thing. And and by the way, I'm sure I am that guy to somebody out there. Like, I'm less sophisticated than I should be, but but 
it occurs to me like I should always be trying to play catch up and I should always feel like the least educated person in the room when it comes to whatever inside sauce on that. Well, yeah, I think certainly you, 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 you want to, you, I guess my, but the only thing that I would disagree with is that like, it, it doesn't come to a point of like personal fitness for me, but it is an element of like, I will one day be left out and there will be nothing I can do about it. And so I need to continue to be a part of it on some level while maintaining the base level of detached nineties irony that I've, I've uh, was the only language I knew uh, until they started changing the song. So I have to ride this very weird dichotomy of like, huh, yeah, I don't know. Well, all the cool kids, I'll just be back here, you know, uh, you know, making a mixtape for Winona Ryder, and uh, <laughs> and, and then everybody else is, is like doing the cool thing. But then I also want to be a part of it, and that's why I'm going to be at at Twitch, and I'll have no idea, and I I'll, I won't talk to anybody. In fact, here's uh, you know who I found out is going to be there is Alex Bagnola. So I'm like, great. Now I, I don't have to make any new friends. I can just have... <laughs> you have the one where I, I've I've already plotted out my entire schedule. We have homeroom together. We have geography together. We have history together. I don't need any other friends. You know, I can I can uh, stay alone during algebra and pre calc. Exactly. And and meanwhile, it's like it's perfect because she's a super networker. So I can just let her be like, oh, there's a person who I think I should talk to. And be like, oh yeah, if you like talking. <laughs> so, uh, well, so are you performing at TwitchCon or you're just attending? Jack. Jack shit. I'm literally, this might be the first, I'm going to go to two cons in the next couple weeks, uh, where I am doing nothing but hanging out. And I have not done that since, I mean, geez, uh, I, I would guess the first con that I went to was a Star Wars celebration. Then two weeks later, we did our first Dragon Con. And I think since then, I have been a part of programming for every con that I've gone to. Yeah. Uh, 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 pro tip from somebody who's been there. Um, yeah, there's been some of those things where uh, even when I have performed, it's been real tempting and easy to be all like, well, if they don't need me for anything, I'll just be up in my room. Hey, hey, who's on Twitter? I'm awesome. I'm in my little bubble. Um, and then when it was, and it felt really good at the time, but then when it was over, I was like, what did I get out of that? And I was like, well, that con must have sucked because I didn't get anything out of it. And, it was, and then and then Smart Brian is like, yeah, but what did you put into it? It was like, nothing. They, they didn't recognize what awesome genius they had. I was busy in the room playing that Hearthstone. Wasn't going to play itself. Uh, yeah, no, I, I will, we'll, we'll, we're going to see. So, uh, it'll be, it'll be a fun time. If you're at TwitchCon, come and, uh, I do like talking to people. I do like making new friends. <laughs> so come, come say hello. Uh, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm kind of being a little bit more of a gloomy gust than I think I, I would otherwise have to be because there's plenty of people that I'm going to be able to run into and talk to. So, uh, it'll be, it, it'll be, it'll be a good time. I don't know. I don't know, man. But uh, you were out in Orlando Doing all sorts of crazy family shit. Yeah, who boy, man, bit off, bit off a, a lot. You know, it's uh, it's it sure is easy over the middle of the summer to say, you know, what was great seven years ago, uh, being in Orlando and doing Halloween horror nights, and you know, uh, how about I stop fantasizing that that out of nowhere I'll be plucked up and suddenly thrown back into that life, and how about instead now that I have a four-year-old, an eight-year-old, uh, or a nine-year-old, and a 13-year-old. Um, you know, what say, what say now that they're old enough to remember most of this, we go and do it again. And uh, and then you get going, and you just, everyone has a list of things they want to do. And it's just insane. I, I, you you know how time compresses right, when you're at a on, convention. Hold on, hold on, hold on, pause. Yep. You have three daughters. They all of are different ages and, and strata. Uh, they all yep. caught into different Disney Channel uh, commercials, uh, give me the the one uh, a request from your daughters. You don't have to name which one that you're like. Oh, sh stop it! You're better than that. I raised I raised somebody better than to have this Disney priority. Oh my God! Well, this is uh, and by the way, uh, uh, I'm sure some audio listener right now is realizing like, are those crickets in the background? Yes, because I'm out on the porch because that's where I get LTE. You're going to hear crickets this whole episode, uh, uh, just like usual. But um, tis um, the uh, 
here's the weird part is before we left, we had this big negotiation meeting. We all came together and it was like, yeah. what do you care about the most? And I said, for me, I want everybody to get along. And I, like, if we just go and all I do is serve everyone and we go do what you want to do, all I want is happy family memories out of this. And I'll do literally anything. Um, but the kids, kids seem to want really cool stuff. Uh, the youngest, it was meet Elsa and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, Penny was utterly inflexible when it came to doing the new Pandora rides, uh, which, of course, there there is no like I've got pretty good. Know a guy who knows a guy jujitsu chops, yeah. especially in a town where I headlined for three years at Universal Orlando. No big uh, deal. Just the slightest tendrils, you know, just like, hey, uh, you know, is there a uh, is there is it possible to um, blah, blah, nothing, just nothing like that is that is non uh There is you, you will you will get in that line and you will go for three hours before you get on. And sure enough, that's what we did. We got up at six forty five in the goddamn morning and. And and got in early park access so that we could spend our magic hour, air quotes, um, to uh, uh, get an hour ahead of everyone else in the three hour line, um, only to get to the front and realize that our youngest was too small to ride the ride. No. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> yeah. so wait, so wait, 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 wait. but that uh, that is that the, you guys did the child swap. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is I thought that we were just hosed, and I was like, oh, well, what are you going to do? I'll, I'll hang out here with, with Callie. So I spent the next oh. two hours hanging out with Callie playing uh, Hearthstone, and then it was Bonnie who shows up and says, uh, guess who gets a free pass to ride again with the child swap thing? And it's like I didn't even know that was that was a deal. Oh, no, that's the prime way to sneak back onto rides is when you're getting off, you just walk through the little uh, uh, whatever uh, child swap Thing that gets you right back to the front, and yep. then you and you're some dirtbag teenager with a kid. Although there's no kid anywhere, so I guess. <laughs> uh, well, so this is the weird part. Is on the one hand, they're doing an amazing job of being much more efficient. Uh, whoever's playing Roller Coaster Tycoon over at Disney has figured out like this Magic Band biz is brilliant because you get to track where everyone goes, you get to add personalized aspects to everything. Um, you also get to have people pay and never know how much they're spending or how much they've spent, which is the the, the yeah. real dangerous thing here. Because which, by, I asked, by the, I was like, by the hey. way, uh, uh, for those for, for folks who are only listening and, and have no idea what what the magic band is, uh, explain what the magic band is because you are wearing it right now. In fact, you are about as touristed out as I have, I have ever seen you. You are still uh, wearing a Disney sticker. You have the magic band on your wrist. You have copious crickets. There's, oh, you have two stickers. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, Callie, apparently. I didn't realize that until just now when we we're on the air. I reached up and I patted the top of my head and I realized she'd put another sticker on there. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, no, I am dad as fuck. Uh, that, and, and that's fine. I'm having a great time doing it. Um, the, the, the magic bands is an RFID thing that ties to your hotel room. So if there are perks that come with whatever your hotel room is, you get them automatically, but more dangerously also tied to your credit card, which yeah. hot damn, is it a lot of fun to just, you know, wave your hand and say, give me that. Thank you. Now I have it. Uh, give me another one of those. Those are delish and we're done. Um, uh, but the weird part was, is I asked casually like, Hey, so how do I find out how much I've spent? And then suddenly everybody doesn't know nothing. They're all like, ooh, I guess you would track down somebody at your hotel who I guess can I guess you maybe look that up. Uh, find the blood of an Englishman, I think, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, produce a ritual with a hemlock. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, to be honest, science uh, may, may never know exactly how much you spent. Well, so here's the downside to all of this efficiency is that it used to be I was king of just going wherever the crowds weren't, right? If if there's lines, then just go where there's not lines because you know the lines will go down. But nowadays, they've made it so fast to use your app to say, tomorrow I want to do this and that and the other thing. And then it, it saves your spot and all that, uh, which means like the moment slots open up, 
everybody has a smartphone and nobody's doing anything and they all just jeep chop and they all take it all. Uh, which means for the first time ever, I've had to wait in a bunch of fucking real lines. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't like I don't like these lines. And I, I don't like planning in advance. And I don't like uh, waiting in lines, which used to be uh, as long as you're fluid and don't really care what you do. As long as there's not a line involved, there was always plenty of stuff. You just went with there's no lines. But now everything's a uh, million, million lines. Uh, so number one, there is something that everybody needs to understand, which there are a few things on earth that make Brian more irrash immediately and irrationally mad than the idea that he is a person waiting like other people. Would that be safe to say like that, that that is a well, pers- pet peeve of yours? That, uh, you're not wrong, Walter. Uh, you're an asshole. Um, the, uh, uh, specifically, it's not that I have disdain for other people or whatever. It's that I resent unused bandwidth of my time. I am pretty flexible about what I I, 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 I don't hold much very precious to me, right? Uh, except yeah. for my time. And I'd rather spend my time not standing uncomfortably in a line. And so as a result, like, you know, All right. so, if a so line- just so just so everybody knows, it's not that Brian thinks he's better than other people. He right. thinks his time is more valuable than other people's. All right, go ahead. No, okay, okay. Well, uh, yes, and uh, <laughs> and eat, eat shit. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just allergic to lines, and and the problem is, and I'm also, that's and that's fine. 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 But this I'm, has been your brand. This is your brand, man. Like, 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 like. There, there's a reason why you know you can trust Brian Brushwood's authenticity for how to get there the fastest way possible. If, if, if he were indeed to do the Kessel Run, he'd do it in 12 parsecs. Like, this is, this is exactly your brand. You should not shy away from it. You don't like fucking waiting in lines because you want to figure out a way, a smarter way to do it. You should own it. Uh, okay. Well, I'm owning it. I hate lines, and that's fine. But I also hate planning. And it turns out that you can have one, but not both. Uh, and so, and so tomorrow, my whole day is planned, and we're going to show up on time to get our jeep jobs to go to the cleep clops. Uh, hey, so um, I met Kylo Ren today. The, oh, okay. Wait, hold on, Kylo, Kylo Ren, the Kylo Ren. Yeah, in fact, uh, could could you get Kylo Ren on the phone? <laughs> Sure, yeah, hold on. <laughs> oh, uh, Ky- uh, Ky- Kylo Ren? Yeah, it's me, it's Kylo Ren. Hey, listen, um, I mean, we're friends, right? I mean, sure. sure. <laughs> okay, now, Ky- Kylo, because uh, the thing is, is you call into the show all the time. And, yeah. and and you seem pretty chill and relaxed, right? Well, I mean, you know, I, 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 I just, I, I... you what? Well, I, I just <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, I mean, sometimes I get a little, I get a little nervous. Okay, well, so here here's the mistake. I just got a little nervous on the show, and so you, when, you, when you talk to me, and, and now, uh, you know, I talk, and it's, it's okay. Well, okay, Kylo, I don't know if you remember this, but... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know when... Okay, so, Kylo, um... I don't, I don't know when to talk, it's disgusting. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's fine. But, Kylo, so today... I was I was at Hollywood Studios and I went to the Star Wars land and I saw that I could meet Kylo Ren and I thought, uh, you know, as you usually sign off, you say anyway, see you later. And I thought it would be great if I could meet you in person and get you on video saying anyway, see you later. And then we could play it for all the Night Attack fans and they would think that was a a, a really great uh, tip of the hat to our show because you seem to enjoy the show, right? Well, I, I mean, it, it just seemed like it's. It, I mean, maybe I've been lured into. Well, I mean, maybe that maybe that explains what happened today because 
um, I definitely made my daughters wait in line with me. And you know how I feel about lines, right, Kylo? Wait, you don't like lines? No, 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 I don't, I don't. But, but I stood in one to meet you today, and in my mind, I was going to kind of be all like, hey, say to all my friends, anyway, see you later, uh, and that would be a hilarious jape. But um, after 20-plus minutes in line and my daughter's abandoning me, eventually they got bored. They're like, Dad, I don't want to meet Kylo Ren. And they left, and I was like, well, that's fine. I'll be by myself. And so the guys – <laughs> the guy at the front is like, uh, hey, how many in this group? Okay, you're two. And behind you, how many in your group? Three. And, and how about how many of you? And I held up my one finger because I was by myself. And the guy had like this this shock, you know, recognition. And he goes, Han Solo. As if he respected that. Although I, I suspect he didn't respect it. But uh, I eventually... No, that's, a, that's, a, that's a joke he makes. But we all think a lot about sad. <laughs> Okay, okay, great. Well, so so I find myself uh, in my early 40s in line to meet a cartoon character, or a, uh, not a cartoon, I guess you're in a cartoon too, but but a character from, from a beloved yeah, uh, For what? Most highest grossing domestic. <laughs> okay, that's a good point, Kylo Ren, that's true. But, but... Um, I mean, what, I mean, it's called Star Wars. It's a, it's a popular franchise. I'm getting it. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> but yeah. so they let me into the room. There was initially a movie from the 70s, but now there's no movies, and I'm in them. And so I'm a big star. <laughs> okay, but the weird thing is. Uh, they let me into the room, and and at this point, uh, like I've given up on any idea that my kids will get anything out of the experience, and I'm just thinking I want to do this to amuse the the fans of of Night Attack. And by the way, if people don't know, tune into the after shows. Kylo Ren's on here all the time; always calls in. He's like he's like Youngin's MC calling in to Stern in the early '90s. Uh, always calling in in the after show. Um, the, uh, that's a that's a timely reference. Um, so so I go in and all I want is to get Kylo Ren to say uh, anyway, see you later on on video. And I walk in and uh, I, I don't know if you know this, uh, Kylo, but um, everybody in that room takes their characters very seriously and their characters are literal Nazis, literal space Nazis, that, uh, that, that uh, Imperials that I am meant to be afraid of. Uh, and so they all sort of radiate a, a bit of uh, 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 your crew, Kylo. They're a bit intense. They're, they're a bit uh, intense. Yeah, yeah. They're the first order. Yeah, they're intense. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. I'm sorry that device and they recorded video of this whole experience and um and so i walk up and and i'm so excited to see you and i say uh the first words out of my mouth are like oh my gosh kylo ren i have this friend who does an impression of you and then and that's as far as i got when kylo ren leaned over very intensely and was just like uh, and just says i sense something in you and uh, and he was like, you have darkness in your heart, and uh, and he's and and uh, it was very clear that I it reminded me of 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 when Michael Rooker turns on his dominant alpha male persona, uh, and you're face to face with it. Um, I I wilted in your presence, Kylo Ren, as you offered to uh, like I, I, at no point it, it suddenly became very clear you would not be hilariously 
saying anything I wanted to. And instead, you wanted to make it very clear to me that uh, that that you were in charge and that you wanted to uh, do- dominate my soul? Question mark. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, you know, I like to get in the zone. <laughs> I, I, I like to, uh, I, I just look at myself in the mirror and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and who's the man? Who's, who's here for, who's running, who's running this town? Who's the town's mayor? Uh, that's me, that's Kylo Ren, out his weight. And normally I'm actually really nice. I'm really nice with everybody and all the kids and the families and I'm like, Hey, you want to come take a picture with Kylo and I do? Uh, no, whenever we get the Han Solos, that's when I turned it off. So it became abundantly clear that I would not be getting the, the valued footage I was hoping for. And, and instead, I just wilted in your presence. And, um, and eventually, I realized since you uh, wouldn't be saying, anyway, see you later, when the meeting ended, I <laughs> said, anyway, see you later. <laughs> and it was super awkward and a failed mission and i skulked away and 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 went and uh and went to epcot well anyway <laughs> see you later <laughs> click and oh weird oh, we lost kylo we lost ren, kylo ren. Lost kylo ren. <laughs> justin you missed kylo ren <laughs> God damn it, I always miss Kylo Ren. <laughs> Kylo Ren's always on the show. Oh, God, Justin, it was so awkward. <laughs> and I hate that there's video of it. Um, Wait, who has that video? video? Oh. Who has this I, footage? I, I do. Do you want me to send it to you? I was hoping Absolutely I, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> God, are you kidding? How did you want to tell this story without playing this fucking video? I wanted video? that to be it. I shared the tale. Um, well, send it to me. We'll play it in the after show. How about we do that? All right. Well, oh, I'll okay. tell you what. That's right. good Fair reason enough. why you should get this uh, after show early uh, because you could become a patron on patreon.com slash night attack. Yeah, man, dude. Patrons are the lifeblood of this show, and you get a special benefit. If you guys enjoy us making your day just a little bit brighter, normally you get an hour, an hour and a half or so. If you are a patron, you get a super secret RSS feed where you get double the horse apples and shenanigans. You get the complete pre-show, the complete show, the complete post-show, all in one two- to four-hour rock block that'll keep you amused and entertained as you work out for the Olympics. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that's something that a lot of people do when they're listening to this show. In fact, we've sent over 47 Olympians uh, uh, to compete uh, since the beginning of this show, Brian. Uh, I mean, who can forget Lillehammer? Uh, uh, we oh, had uh, 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 who Jopu, can forget uh, uh, Atlanta? Yeah, uh, 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 Barcelona, Los Angeles, 1984. Yeah, uh, 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 Sochi. I mean, uh, hot nights. And then cool. Uh, uh, Cal- Cal- and so- Cal- Calgary, 2006, uh, I think. Uh, Salt Lake City, uh, old, old Mitt Romney, save those. And we <laughs> yeah, okay. you beat me to Mitt the Mitt Romney yeah. comment. Uh, anyway, if you want to go to the Olympics, give us a dollar an episode, and we absolutely guarantee you, pinky promise, cross our hearts, we'll commit suicide if we don't, you'll go to the Olympics. Yeah, no, uh, uh, we will kill ourselves if you don't uh, win a gold medal within the next four years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, have you ever wanted just... an Olympic gold medal? Why don't you just just shut up and buy one? It's only $1 per episode at patreon.com slash night attack. Genuine I mean, right, gold medal certified by the Olympic International Award Committee. I mean, uh, stop being an idiot. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That's the new slogan. Patreon.com slash night attack. Stop being an uh, idiot. So I, I, I got two more two more quick things to share that are pretty great. Oh, um, this uh, morning. First, 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 yeah. first, oh, oh, first. Oh, oh, oh. Brian, there are two things that we do with uh, 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 the, the Patreon. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the night attack. New Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of <laughs> let's let's go in reverse order and remind everybody that this is the one time that we go full on cam girl, and for the duration yeah. of this segment, 
anybody who subscribes or gives us tips on that uh, on that Twitch.tv channel. Uh, we will call you out and shout you down, just like Kylo Ren did to me. Exactly. No, that's it. We are going to single you out and shame you publicly for giving us <laughs> it. <laughs> Like uh, like Papa Bouvet, thank you for your five months. Oh uh, yeah, hey Papa Bouvet, thank. What do you think we are, stupid? Uh, 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 w Scott is one. Thanks for the bits, man. What do you think? Just because I have this haircut, I'm an idiot. What about I Man eleven twenty? <laughs> yeah, hey I Man eleven twenty. It's a high noon for you. I mean, almost. <laughs> Brian, what, what, what would you say to the Crimson Zamboni for his sixth month of subscription? Uh, dude, uh, uh, six months? That's a long time for a guy whose name is a Perry Grip novelty count song shout out. Yeah. Hey, hey, ba hey, Babcat, uh, like a sheep. Like a sheep. Like a, like a sheep. Like a sheep. Yeah. Trey yeah. Warren. Hey, hey, like hey, a, also, like NSFW Ben. Rabbits. Uh, 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 Thrumwald, uh, uh, the, 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 the Lenina, hey, the, the Lenina, what's Benito up, Crash. girl? Shiftlock. <laughs> uh, can I just say we have the best, dumbest job in the entire planet? This, this is the best is a thing great ever. way to make, this is a viable economy. Bacadile, uh, in style. <laughs> Bacadile in style, that's not an insult. <laughs> hey I mean, man, yeah, the I don't style know. is Nazis. Oops. WJ gotcha. says he just subscribed. Thanks for saying that, you. Uh, hey, uh, did you have a, a, a patron that we could chant? Yeah, we do. Uh, I know what this guy's doing. This guy is a personal assistant to Kylo Ren. He's oh, in the middle oh. of shaking his head because I bet he was there in his imperial digs watching me, rolling his eyes. Thank you, Lenina. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, you're probably from uh, Dantooine, uh, Matt Hogg. Matt, at, 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 uh, Matt, Matt Hogg. Matt Hogg. Now I'm saying the ladies', ladies voice. voice. Get, ready. Get ready. Hold on. Ready. I got to clear my throat. 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 And, and also, also repeat, repeat what, what I just said, said so that my lady voice will summon. summon. Here it is. I'm going to say the lady, lady voice. voice. And, and uh, uh, as soon as, as, soon as my lady, lady voice, voice stops, stops texting, texting and, and ignoring me three, three feet, feet away from me right, right now. <laughs> oh, hey, nine nine of 12, well, thank you so much. Thank you so, so, thank so much for the bits, 9 and 12. I'm going to say, say Matt Hogg in my best lady, lady voice. voice. Here it Here comes. comes. Matt, Matt Hogg. My, that's my lady voice pretending to be a man voice. By being really low for there, there we go. go. That's 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 <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason and Bryant. You are a champion. By the way, don't forget that you guys uh, have free money. You can steal money right out of the space pockets of, of old Chrome Dome himself. That's right, Destro, who runs uh, Amazon. You can steal money right out of his pocket by using your Amazon Prime uh, account. And, uh, and, and half that money will go to us. Two dollars. Yeah, these crafty kids trying to steal my doubloons while I'm uh, merging with uh, Whole Foods. I'm Jeff Bezos, and I'll take my big old arms and punch you rapscallions into space. <laughs> Ah, you ain't no Australian Siri. Get out of here. You've got weak arms. They're big old noodly appendages. I'll take that Amazon and I'll bend in an ass with my big. <laughs> oh, Australian Siri. It's good to good to hear from you. How have you been, man? Just, I'll never take a right on Davis. And then <laughs> bend it in half with your big strong hands. That's what I'd do. I'd just take it and I'd take both sides of the street and I'd bend it in half with my big strong hands. All right, two quick things, two, two quick things. Um, there was a magical, two magical moments today, today. Uh, one was after I was uh, shirking, uh, slinking away, embarrassed after Kylo Ren. We were walking out and on the street, uh, I found a street performance that became my favorite street performance I've ever seen in all of Disney. Uh, it's at uh, Hollywood, and basically the setup for it is... Uh, the mayor of Hollywood, uh, Sonny Burbank, is trying to get this actress to go on a date with him, and uh, and he's, he's desperately. Too 
soon. What? Too soon. Too soon. Too oh, soon. Yeah, it, it is. It is kind of on the money, isn't it? <laughs> Crash well, so skid at Disney World lands mouse in hot water. <laughs> um, but uh, basically what the guy it became like watching Night Attack it was the most delightful improv sketch thing ever where it's like the guy basically is trying to say I'll take you on a date but not someplace boring someplace good like uh, and he would always start to snap his finger like uh, like uh, like uh, and then zero in on somebody and they'd say like uh, like Phoenix and it, it'd be like yeah like Phoenix and whatever it was he would roll with it but but he uh, uh, and then and then every time somebody gave a thing, he would just hand them a bribe. He would hand them a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was 15, 20 minutes of building the most wonderful, ridiculous, insane story. And uh, he would take moments to recap the eventually 50 to 90 suggestions that were weaved uh, interwoven in the whole thing uh, where it became both kind of like a feat of mentalism. The only thing that was lacking was he didn't walk over to a tube suspended from a street lamp and show that it was pre-written the entire time out exactly the ridiculous long date on there. Um, That was amazing. If you get a chance to see that, see that. And then the other thing was, uh, you know, at, at food and wine festival, they bring in bands and, Bonnie and I had talked through we, uh, you know, which bands we had heard of and wanted to see, but but there was one that went under the radar that it was like it was a familiar name, but I couldn't I couldn't place it, and uh, the uh, we were talking about this in the pre-show. It was a familiar name, but I couldn't place it. I thought it was maybe like an acapella group or something. I remember there was something quirky about them. And uh, this afternoon, as I was walking to the bathroom, I heard what I thought was. Uh, was maybe thunder in the distance i'm like oh no no, it's the band starting up and i heard like three notes and all of a sudden like a thunderclap it hit me postmodern jukebox is not a shitty acapella band they are my favorite uh, cover artists that do incredible uh, modern day music in the style of you know 20s 30s 40s big band covers you name it and it was it was like all of a sudden it was this wonderful gift that like Bonnie hadn't mentioned their name because it was only vaguely familiar to her as well. And hot damn, hot damn, I am still afterglowing from their astonishing, amazing performance. It really felt like this was the biggest gig they had, they had, they had done. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just have that ability to project a, a wide-eyed enthusiasm for you know 3,000-seat arenas packed for them. But they seemed really excited, and god damn, they were on fire. They were on fire. Fire and it was astonishing. So much talent. I I went from somebody who liked their stuff to pe- to somebody who loved everything about everybody involved in this project. Uh, it they they blew the freaking uh, 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 toes off of my feet. Like, oh, they tap danced. Yeah, no, uh, they were great. They were great. They were great. They were great. Um, Postmodern jukebox was my favorite concert I've seen in years. And uh, I'm sad. Oh, and the weird crossover of that <clears throat> was that uh, for the past two days, I've been seeing all these time travelers cosplaying like it's 20s, 30s, and 40s. And I thought that was just a hot new trend of fashion. But it turns out it's just fans who love what they do so much that they that they are showing up in costume. It was awesome seeing a little bit of Dragon Con bleed over into the Epcot scene. Uh Dude, so so uh, you, you uh, the, I guess they were, they were performing for food and wine, right? Yeah, yeah, and and normally what you get is you get a bunch of acts that that you know have that are now in the harvesting phase of what they're doing, like like they've had their their whole run, and now it's like, well, this is a good thirty to sixty thousand dollar gig that's uh, easy Brian that we could do. Brian doesn't want to say the kind of acts that are normally there, but. Somebody once told him. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, they covered that song, and it was better than the original. It was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. They were. Oh, and so normally, what you'll get is they'll come out and they'll do the same like greatest hits, thirty to thirty-five minutes set, uh, over and over and over again. But instead, they came out and they basically did an entire concert and just broke it into chunks with 30 minutes in between. And it was clear that their fans uh, were, I mean, I saw, I saw seven, maybe eight standing ovations throughout the, the course of the evening and, and deserve it. I mean, it was, uh, it, it's astonishing. I am certain that, uh, I don't know if this is their first performance at Epcot, 
um, I'm sure that uh, that somebody's already posted videos of all this stuff. But man, you I, look at that crowd, look at that enthusiasm, look at that energy, listen to that talent. It's delightful. Can't say enough good stuff about them. Postmodern jukebox are my jam. Uh, I heard that there was uh, a moment for you at the concert, though, too. Oh, wait, did I tell uh, Yeah, okay, I got, I got made. I got made uh, <laughs> after the show and uh, in front of my kids. The show ended, and, and I, if you're not seeing the video, I am about as far away from classic Brian as I've ever been in my entire life, except for when I was 12. Uh, the, like I've got a big, bushy, ridiculous, uh, wild man beard. Uh, you know, I'm wearing glasses and a hat and, uh, and, and sure enough from the row behind me, the second the concert was over. So it was like, excuse me, is your name Brian? I was like, shut up. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and it was great. Uh, the guy turns out he was a fan of the modern rogue, which made me very happy because, uh, uh, modern rogue is what I want people to be watching. And, um, and then the moment he leaves, Josie's like, <laughs> Josie's like, Dad, what's it like to be famous? Is it fun? And I was like, it means you've got to be on your best behavior all the time. And then Body's just like, I wasn't on my best behavior. <laughs> because, because the moment this happened, Bonnie thought, like, they ask everyone to stand, and I didn't stand at the end <laughs> because I was so tired. And now that guy watched Brian's wife not stand at the end of the concert. <laughs> Wait, that's well, don't you feel bad about down. that? Literally. That's what Bonnie feels really bad about. She was oh like, I God. reflect tell poorly that, on don't your don't organization. Tell that to get bent. Uh, <laughs> he can learn how to make himself uh, old-fashioned on the modern rogue to calm himself down. <laughs> You're allowed to not stand after down. a dick <laughs> on your feet at fucking Disney. <laughs> but Bonnie's off camera right now <laughs> reading me the riot act like I just sat down did you mention the part where I was all the way over at test track and I had to walk all the way over <laughs> uh, alright listen we, 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 we do have a game uh, that we want to get to but I have one question that I have to ask you yeah 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 because my if I were to go to Epcot if I were to go to food and wine my my goal would be to get as uh, uh, not goal, but a side effect of me having a very, very good time would be probably being too drunk to be around children if, if you are trying to make a magical Disney uh, a vacation memory. Uh, I have been to Epcot with you where these goals have been <laughs> shared. Uh, uh, was uh, what, what did you have like an internal line of like, I mean, surely you're not going to totally go without a, a, a cool beverage on a hot day at food and uh, food and wine. But like, what is the internal uh, a dad can't get too drunk line? Um, well, I mean, luckily, it's a little bit um, uh, kind of organic because between the lines and the walking around and the fact that, you know, they're not selling hard liquor or anything. You know, it's like it's it's fairly tough in that environment unless you're cheating, unless you have something in your bag or whatever. It's fairly tough to get ahead of schedule in there. So, so I mean, I think, you know, like even today we had like, what, three or God, four beers God, over the entire God. day or something? Listen, there is there is, uh, there is footage of, of, of you very gingerly sipping a Jägermeister. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the curse that won't leave me. <laughs> fair enough, fair Brian, enough. Brian's shameful uh, uh, toast sipping, uh, which has been caught at... <laughs> Seven angles on Snapchat and edited or on Snapchat and edited together. <laughs> Somebody gets to get okay. this the Bruder film of Brian's fucking. No, uh, no, no. no. Hey, uh, hey, we got a game, right, Justin? We got a game. This week on the Modern Rogue, how to make your <laughs> friends think you're about to really toast. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's weird. It's like, it's almost like a job, you know, when you got, when you, when you know, it's like, you're trying to, when you know, you're trying to set up memories for the kids, it's, it's, uh, you know, you find yourself just kind of focused on, uh, you know, on, on it's work basically, you know? All right. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, I'm sure that we will hear much more about the, uh, the, the, the back half of your vacation to Orlando next week, including you going back to Halloween Horror Nights, which is uh, uh, going to be super, super, super rad. 
but yeah, uh, it sounds uh, like a hell of a year too. They got they got a bunch of rad properties. They got like a, a shining house. They they got a saw house. They got uh, they got the, the they got Blumhouse <laughs> uh, Productions. All those licenses. Uh, which yeah, dude, that's awesome, and also means that you can uh, more efficiently skip the lines because I, I, I assume that Halloween Horror Nights is a place that you still have some some stroke, right? Oh, oh no! Oh, no Ryan froze. And oh, that smug look at little smart smart like, too. Yeah, look at him. Uh, you. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah. While we try to figure that out, Bryce, can you explain uh, uh, the game that we will be playing? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are going to be playing. Oh, I don't. We we need to crowdsource a title for this game during. Uh, perfect time to do it. Yeah. Uh, this is a great, <laughs> great time to crowdsource a name for the game, Bryce. That's sure. awesome. Uh, great timing. That's right. Uh, but I found a uh, I found multiple lists online of uh, these. Bad, sexy Halloween costumes. You know, sexy, sexy Halloween costumes, right? Oh, oh man, wait, sexy so uh, financial sexy arbitrage, Halloween. sexy, uh, sexy uh, World War One, managing, <laughs> <laughs> sexy Kaiser Wilhelm, <laughs> yeah, sexy, uh, sexy Archduke Franz Ferdinand, Se sexy Rick, Ricky J costumes. magician, yeah, a sexy can of mustard gas. <laughs> Like, uh, sexy Schindler. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so... Hey, by the way, he's got you on his list. <laughs> because a kiss, a kiss is on his list. Right. Uh, sexy Pickle Rick. <laughs> that's, I'm sure that's real this oh. year. You kidding? Yeah. So, uh, so, one of the things about this is that when they list these costumes online, they don't want to say what the property is because yeah. you might get in trouble for selling unofficial merchandise or, you know, yeah, listen, if, if they wanted to get a license, they would have got the license. They're trying to, to flip some uh, stuff on the cheap. They can get some good uh, retail space. You know, they can make a, a deal with old Ted spirit who opens up his stores this time of year. And <laughs> yeah. And so I thought I thought we could we could use those generic names that they list these these costumes under, and maybe play a little uh, a little twenty question style game, uh, and see if you guys can figure out who what these sexy costumes are. Got gotcha. you. All, All right, right. So Brian, hit me, us up. Me, me, you, and the chat room will be aligned. We're we're just trying to get this thing within ten. Yeah, you guys. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that the number of questions, uh, Bryce, you get to grant the number of questions. If it starts, if it feels too easy for us, then sure. then you can you tell us how many questions we get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll start with this first one. You guys will get 15. I'll give you 15 questions for this one. Oh, right on. And the title of the listing is "Sexy Dead Assassin Costume." Sexy uh, dead uh, assassin costume. So, uh, it, uh, you know what? I'm 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 sorry, Justin. This is probably a waste of a question, but we have 15. Is it? No, never mind. Um. Uh. Okay. Is it a comic book character? Yes. Is it Deadpool? Okay. Fuck. God damn it! That was exactly <laughs> what I was gonna guess, but I thought for sure that's gonna be a big old waste of a thing. <laughs> yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. Coming out the gate. Coming out the gate. Uh, uh, we are, we are a uh, rock. Oh my God. What a shitty fucking costume. Oh my God. Oh, that Brian is showing <laughs> a photo of him and Kylo Ren. Oh, what? do you think this looks like Kylo Ren in your, in your photo? <laughs> no, it was enough to, I, I'm triggered. <laughs> Jesus. It brings back memories. <laughs> All right. So that's how the game is played. You guys are going to be playing off against me. Uh, here's, here's a uh, round two. I'm going to give you 15 questions for this oh women's sorcery costume. Women's sorcery costume? Women's sorcery costume. We'll start with you, um, Brian. Is this, right, we'll start uh, with Justin. First question. Uh, is we'll this... start, start with Justin. Justin, Justin, oh, Justin. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, is, is the character this is portraying school-aged? Ooh. I don't know. Uh, okay, so that, that means it's probably not a Harry Potter thing, because I was thinking the same probably thing. Not Potter, yeah. Uh, one, one more time, what was the, what was the title? Woman's Sorcery Costume. Oh, I'll tell you what, I bet you it's Gandalf in hot pants. <laughs> uh, sorcery. Um, uh, oh, is this an, an, has this ever appeared as an animated property? 
Yes. Ooh. Women's sorcery costume. If you buy it now, it's only $22. Man, all right. Uh, 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 was this property released within the last 10 years? Originally, no. Uh, uh, I'll double down. Uh, within the last 30 years. Ooh, let me let me look that up. Because I think the answer is still no. Uh, no. Ooh. No, hey, uh, so uh, older uh, than did, 30 years. Uh, uh, did this character, was this character portrayed by Angelina Jolie? I don't believe so, no. Is it Gandalf in hot pants? <laughs> <laughs> Stop wasting all our questions. It is not man. Gandalf in hot pants. No, yeah, it'd be like, like, I joined you now with the turning of the tide. And he just flashes his ass like... Okay, uh, uh, is is this a Disney owned or managed property? Yes. All right. So Shoot. sorceress, women's right. sorcery so, costume. Uh, is it? Oh wait, is it uh, 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 the 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 Snow White witch? It is not uh, Maleficent from Snow White. No, wait, or, no. wait. It is not the Snow White woman. It, or, or the old crone. <laughs> like that. I just yeah, that's what I'm talking just, about. The old crone. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> the old crone in hot pants. <laughs> it's hot just pants. an apple. It's just an apple in a sun tanning bed. <laughs> and it's like a, a pair of hot pants. It's like, I'm trying to swallow your apple tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is not. Okay. Um. You have uh, you are eight yeah, questions. Yeah, let me see from Sleeping Beauty. Oh. Hello. <laughs> you are at eight questions in. Eight questions. We only have seven questions left. Um, okay, so let's talk. And we know it's a Disney property and it's animated. Um, is it is it older than fifty years? Is it older than fifty years? Let me double check the date. Yes. That 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 the Disney animated version yes. came out. <sighs> Justin. What Justin. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, man. I'll tell you what. I, I'm 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 running the ground here, Bry. Uh, uh, is it a Marvel property? No. Okay. So yeah, it's questions. classic Disney. Uh, and and uh, uh, we're we're down to how many questions? Five more. Okay. Um, uh, uh, it, is is the wait, character is the character initially a, a a man? Was the character a man initially in the wait, in the wait, source wait. material? <laughs> what? What are you doing, Justin? Yes. <gasps> oh. oh oh oh! It's a women's version of a man's character. Okay. What? Uh, the Hear me now, boy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. We we have a reprieve here. Um, okay. I guess... Also, wait. You heard me fucking ask if this was Gandalf and Hot. <laughs> it's Hot not Pants. Gandalf and Hot Pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's not it gonna is... take the Balrog to make me go down. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, was to be clear. We know it's a Disney property older than 50 years old that was animated. Did uh, this character appear in a full-length motion picture film in that time, uh, more than 50 years ago? Was it a full-length film? Yes. Okay. As a, by which I mean as opposed to, you know, like an a animated cartoon short or, a television or series short, or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We have left. Yeah, three more. Three more? Oh, okay. boy. We're uh, close. We're close. We're close. Uh, 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 wait, sorry. Wait, wait, what was the answer to Brian's last question? Oh, it is. Uh, yes. It was from a feature length film. Uh, okay, Brian, I got it. I got it. I got it. Are you ready? Are you ready? I, I, I guess. Yeah. Sexy Angela Lansbury from bed knobs and broomsticks. Lock it in. Incorrect. <laughs> he sexy. said it was a guy. He <laughs> said it was. 
You had to take the shot, though. You had to take you the shot. 100% no, of the shots you don't that, take. That's like literally the worst 100% of the shots you don't take, Brian. <laughs> On behalf of this team. Um, oh, Must God. Must be a picture of, of uh, Angela Lansbury from Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and Hot Pants. Tell me that shit would fly. You know what? Uh, the chat room's saying it, and I guess I, I can't think of what else to do. Uh, 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 is it Merlin? Is it Merlin? <laughs> Brutal B Pfeiffer in the chat. Angela Lansbury looks kind of like a dude. That's fucked up, and you shouldn't have typed that. She's still alive. Uh, no, it is not Merlin. Okay, hold on. What's up with that hesitation, bro? Is he, it's a Merlin-like character that he doesn't yeah. know what to call him. So what's the Merlin, an old-ass... Oh shit! Are we, are we? We're down to the last. The Is last one. Is it the Sorcerer's Apprentice? Ding 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 ding! Holy yes, cow! <laughs> oh, <laughs> with <A> sexy rats, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, that's hideous! Oh, that's awful! That's the worst thing that's ever happened in American history. <laughs> you didn't get the hot pants right. Yeah, no, totally, totally. Oh like my god, you character. nailed it! You nailed it, Justin! Well done! Like the main character, you will also be bedeviled by unwanted broomsticks poking at you. <laughs> so much wood, as far as the eyes can see, dancing and cajoling and poking you. All right. We've got, uh, we've got another one uh, here. Uh, by the way, somebody in the chat saying that Fantasia is not a feature-length film. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it, it most certainly is, yeah. And, and, minutes. And, and it was uh, Bryce accurately answered it in the spirit in which the question was posed. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, wait, uh, is there, uh, what is the best place where people can get all these links? That, that, that's a, that's yeah. the thing we hear a lot about, like v visual kind of bits. So if, if people want to find these, where can they find them? Great question. If you go to bit.ly slash... N-A costume, that's the letters N-A costume, all lowercase. You can see the doc that I'm pulling these from. And uh, any ones we don't get to, we'll probably go in the after show for some outtakes. Cool. All right, guys, I've got another one here for you. That probably yep. could have been Lansbury, though. <laughs> Maybe. Could have been. Could have been. All right, here's our next round three. Sexy hacker costume. I'm going to give you 15 questions. Oh, oh, is it, uh, real quick, is it Rami Malek in Mr. Robot? Fuck off, fuck off, fuck <laughs> off, fuck off, fuck off. One shot, one shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. It is that's a little amazing. cocktail dress with a hood on it and a Mr. Robot <laughs> mask. No, I'm sorry, mask is not included. Oh, oh. this is amazing, it's just a hoodie. It's pen. just a hoodie, pencil <laughs> When, 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 when you want to say, yes, I consume prestige TV, but also these titties. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh. Reloaded sexy movie character costume. Uh, this has to be a reference to the Matrix Reloaded, right? Uh, 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 is this part of the Matrix uh, property? It is. In fact, in fact, that's close enough that I will just give it to you off the bat because it's not any one. It's a character. trinity. It's just a fucking. Uh oh way. Uh, I was gonna say. I was gonna say tank. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, a, a crewer on the Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was a, 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 a ray, a core of the Earth raver twelve. <laughs> it's it's a, 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 a artificially intelligent squid robot. <laughs> Sexy costume. Sexy, uh, it, it was actually sexy Cornell West uh, the, uh, from the council. <laughs> it's just a bucket of oatmeal that said, that tastes like tasty wheat. All right, here we go. This this one I think you, you'll you'll get a little bit. Uh, misfit hipster costume. I'll give you 15 questions on this. You probably don't need all 15, but misfit hipster costume. Man, all right. So, uh, 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 is it Winona Ryder from Jesus. Reality Bites? It is not Winona Ryder from Reality Bites. Uh, <laughs> misfit hipster costume? That's right, misfit hipster costume. Uh, is this a character from a feature length movie in the last uh, feature length movie period? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, did this movie come out in the last five years? Yes. Ooh, ooh, very recent misfit hipster movie. Uh, was the character this portrays a male? No. Okay, so it's a female, a female misfit mm. hipster. Misfit was it Miambialic from Blossom? It was not Miambialic from Blossom. <laughs> also, five years, Justin. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> um, you gotta ask, though. You gotta ask. You miss one hundred percent of the shots. You don't, you don't have take. To take a shot. <laughs> I mean, you do kind of gotta take a shot when it's just when that big grapefruit's right in front of you, man. No. You gotta swing for the fences. What are you doing? <laughs> um, is this a? Uh, does this movie have any sequels? Mm, uh. No, no. Hmm. Five years. Movie. Oh, uh, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. Lock it in. Heath Ledger and 10 Things I Hate About You. <laughs> no, nope. no. Nope. Stop wasting our questions. <laughs> Not Heath Ledger and 10 Things I Hate About You. <laughs> the <laughs> television. Female. Ask, so you got to ask. You got to ask. You got to ask is the thing about it. <laughs> um, the uh, misfit hipster. Um, uh, is the female who portrayed this character younger than 30 years old today at the time she portrayed it at the time she portrayed it? I mean, according to Hollywood, (laughs) uh, let me do a little, your question one more time was younger than 30 years old. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but it sounds like it sounds uh, reading between the the reading them tea leaves. It sounds like, uh, like like I got a range here. Yeah. No, it, All right, this one's going right to the heart of the matter. Here we go. All right, uh, we're, this is a this is gonna blow this whole thing wide open. Uh, uh, does the character? Original character for this character, does, does it have blonde hair? The original character for this character? Character that this is portraying, <laughs> yeah. Does it have blonde hair? Uh, per your question, the original character is not blonde. Oh, wait. Is this a reboot of a character? But the character, uh, okay, so maybe this is a costume of a version of the character that came out in the last five years, but the character herself has been around before. These crickets are an hipster. unfortunate soundtrack. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 look, good, I, I yelled at them very loudly, and all I got was dirty looks from the neighbors. Um, <clears throat> uh... Uh, you know what? Lock it in. Adam Yout of the Beastie Boys. It is it is not Adam <laughs> Yout from the Beastie oh, Boys. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hey, you gotta you gotta take a swing. <laughs> you got I mean, it's just right there. When it's just so obviously <laughs> a slam dunk. I mean, you just gotta go. <laughs> uh, um, is Harley Quinn? People are saying Harley Quinn in the chat. Is it Harley Quinn? It. is is Harley Quinn. Oh my god! That's fantastic! Good job, chat realm. That was a misfit hipster costume. It cost you $49.99. Uh, oh, this one's a video. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, do, I, I didn't really see that very well. Maybe there's a Skype hic- hiccup. Could you play that six or seven more times? <laughs> I'll send you a link. You can... <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> that that hair question tripped me up because she... Because partially, yeah. That's a good blonde. point. I mean, listen. I mean, she's not Lansbury blonde, but, like, you know, there's, there's obviously a hue. <laughs> she's not Lansbury blonde? That'd be a great band name. <laughs> We're Lansbury blonde. And then they start playing the Murder, She Wrote theme. <laughs> All right, this is our final question. It's our final I will question. Say this. If, I'm ever, if, I, if I'm ever at a bar and the Murder, She Wrote theme starts playing, I will throw my glass on the ground as hard as I can. 
<laughs> like like in 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 jubilation, you'll shout "Opa" afterwards. Oh no, because I will know I'm at the best bar ever, and I I need to make sure that I don't spend the rest of my life here. <laughs> All right, we've got our last one. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the full twenty questions on this one. Uh oh, but we'll see. Uh, the 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 title is infamous speaker costume. Infamous speaker costume. Uh, hey, is it the speaker that Michael J. Fox blows out at the very beginning of Back to the Future? Uh, you know what? Lock it in, Newt Gingrich. <laughs> Newt Gingrich is the infamous speaker. Is... Sexy Newt Gingrich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is no to both of those, unfortunately. Ah, damn. <laughs> Eighteen to go. Eighteen to go. Eighteen All to right. Go. So infamous speaker. Um. Uh, okay. Is is the infamous speaker a historical figure? No. Ooh, that's good to know. Oh. Okay. Wait. Is the infamous speaker? The boombox held up by Radio Rahim in the tear-jerking final scene of Do the Right Thing. No, the instrument speaker is not the radio that the guy <laughs> was in the last scene of Do the Right all Thing. All right, yeah, yeah, that's where the, we just blew four. Uh, and all we know is that it's not a historical I figure. I think we're closer. Uh, I think we're closer, though, to finding out what it is. Um, uh, is the infamous speaker a, a, a human male? Yes. Okay. That's five. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Uh, uh, lock it in. Is the infamous speaker sexy Alex Jones? No, it is not sexy Alex Jones. <clears throat> mm. uh, was was the infamous speaker in a movie? Uh, no. No. So not not a historical figure and not in a movie, correct? Correct. Oh, Brian, hold on. I think we, we lost Brian for a sec. But uh, no, uh, I, I would say not the, in a movie. But but the infamous speaker is a human male. Is a human male. Uh, what well, was the infamous speaker in a television show? Yes. So so yes to a television show, but no to a movie. No to a movie. Yeah, <clears throat> they have not. And it was male, movie. but not a historical speak. Uh, um, was this television show broadcast in the last twenty years? Yes. Okay. Boom. Got it. Slug Is it, it the infamous Paul Reiser from Mad About You? <laughs> it is not sexy Paul Reiser from Mad About You, turns out. <laughs> but not, uh, do we ask about a cartoon? Uh, you did not ask about a cartoon. Okay, okay. Not... Uh, uh, is, is, is it a cartoon? No. Okay. Uh, uh, to, to be clear, when asked it was a historical figure, by which I meant... Not that it was somebody who is no longer culturally relevant, but like uh, I, I, I assume like a real person who is currently active, alive, and speaking today would count as a historical figure. Is that does that clarify or or adjust the answer? Uh, I mean, are, I'll it, use a question. I'll, I'll use a question for that uh, to clarify a historical okay. figure. Uh, is, is it a real? Oh, no, no, wait. We, do, do we hold on? Just ask out. a question Just, separate from that other question. Okay. Justin, uh, do we know if it's a – when they said on television, could would the news count? No, I think that would be historical figure. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's where I'm at. Okay, so so this is a work of fiction. I, I got one. I got one. I got one. It's going to move right. forward. Right? Okay. Uh, is it sexy Paul Reiser from Aliens? <laughs> God damn it. It's not, and by the way, that guy was much more sexy because at least he was motivated and, and willing to take risks. No, he, he made the hard decisions. He did. Uh, lock it in. Is it sexy Frank Underwood? It's not sexy Frank Underwood, but that would be an interesting costume because I don't <laughs> know what you would do for it. Well, I guess you're looking at my ass. <laughs> <laughs> instead of instead of wearing fucking uh, 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 he's wearing like stripper pants. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now I could take a wild guess that your gaze is directed at my half nut that's leaking out of my hot pants. <laughs> you know, my father once told me a man who weren't afraid to show a nut is literally invulnerable. He died of cancer shortly after that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, having a nut exposed did nothing to stop leukemia. I'd prefer to let mine flow free like old Glory herself from the <laughs> West Wing lawn. You have six <laughs> more questions. Uh, how many more questions do we have? You have six more. Ah, uh, six more. Uh, okay. I um, think you're. You're. I think you're getting close. You are making progress. This television show. Mm -hmm. Is it a broadcast television show? As compared to cable television or on over the top networks? Television. Uh, just, I'm, I'm clarifying. No. It wasn't on broadcast. All right. So, so cut out all your scandals and your West Wings and your uh, uh, mad about yous, like all your typical <laughs> political dramas. Uh, so now we'd be looking for, like, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, cable stuff. Yeah. Um, I think, I think we, we, we've, we've drawn a circle around the speaker thing. Oh, uh, is it, uh, how many were questions? Five more. Five. Uh, okay. Uh, is it a political drama television show? No. Ooh, hoy. Infamous speaker. Ooh, is it a comedy? No. Wait. <sighs> so this television show is not a comedy and not a drama. <laughs> <laughs> I it, and and it is fictitious. Uh, it, it is it is narrative. Is this show narrative fiction no infamous speaker so this has to be like a daily show like a trevor noah sexy uh, costume all right or I a feel like, is john it... oliver sexy john oliver it's not sexy john oliver is it sexy angela lansbury's favorite <laughs> daily show host john stewart no, it's not. I'll give you one more because that's how some people do 20 questions. I'll give you a last final guess. Infamous speaker costume. Think about what you know. Cable program. Not fiction. Not political drama. Not comedy. Is it sexy Anderson Cooper? Nope, it's not Koopy Bear. Yeah, but... By the way, you can't. You can't. Uh, 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 sexy Anderson Cooper is redundant. You this don't is, get. You don't get that one. Yeah. You don't get to. That, that's, that's, that's that's a that's white wig and Anderson. any business suit. <laughs> that's that's yeah. called. That's called just looking like Anderson Cooper. Do you have a, Do you have a final guess, Brian? Um. Yeah, I'll say sexy Conan O'Brien. It's not sexy Conan O'Brien. Uh, we actually have a video clip here of this uh, Halloween costume in uh, in the wild. It was spotted in the wild in. Uh, in Utah, of all places, here, uh, here it is. Oh, God damn it! You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was April doing her Schwinn cosplay from. <laughs> This is the best possible ending to this game. You know, good, well done. Good job, you guys. You really, uh, you really kicked my ass on that. Here, I'm gonna give you the winner sound. <laughs> uh, kill me. Hey, Justin, let's say we do a little bit of Diamond Time. Uh, yes, Brian. Diamond Time is where you can go ahead and shout out your projects right here on the show. Just head on over to. R subreddit. You can find that at reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. Our uh, diamond time is right there at the top of the subreddit. You can see the big old green sticky post. 
each and every week. We begin. Oh, wow. And there's one open spot, by the way. So if somebody wants to jam their, get their shit in real quick, you can get your stuff uh, read right there, farm to table on the, uh, on the show tonight. You better hurry. Uh, we begin, though, with Chris Ronan, who says, yo, Chris Ronan here. My good uh, friend Reed McCardell, uh, an enigmatic host of the weekly internet radio program, Whoosh, is producing a second studio album, Tell Me I'm Wrong, featuring a peculiar selection of cover songs and interpretation. Just 30-30% uh, shy of his funding goal, he needs your help to close the gap. Learn more at tinyurl.com slash readalbum2, that is R-E-A-D-E-A-L-B-U-M number two. Uh, or you can just go ahead and search for Tell Me I'm Wrong, a new album on GoFundMe. Diamond Club's own Roberto Villegas will be swapping musical musings with Reed on this, week, this week's 8-Bit Life. Catch it live this Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central at twitch.tv slash Cosmic Radio TV. Meanwhile, Kruvik says, hey, Diamond Club viewers, it's me, Kruvik, a.k.a. Andrew Balls, a.k.a. that guy with the last name they hilariously mispronounced during the name chant corner hour, by which I'm going to guess that means his last name is not pronounced Balls. If you enjoy watching D&D podcasts and shows, consider watching my weekly D&D live stream, Murder Hobos Anonymous. We stream live on Twitch every Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. That's 6 p.m. Central. For those of you living in the past, consider following us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash orangebugstudios or yellow420.com slash murderswag or hitting that sub button on YouTube. One day, maybe we'll grow up and be a real YouTube channel with this shortened name. In the meantime, there's yellow420.com slash murder swag YouTube. Uh, and then uh, because we put the word out, uh, we got a lot of great uh, uh, Diamond Time submissions that I'm just going to read uh, in, in rapid succession. B Viper said, I like boobs. Uh, the Buck R. I said, thank you, fuck you, bye. Uh, and W. Scott is one, says the VOD squad and Ritual Misery have begun streaming on Twitch and are having a friendly competition. Make sure to follow twitch.tv slash the VOD squad and twitch.tv slash ritual misery podcast. Which one will get affiliated to Twitch first? It's up to you. Uh, and that is a uh, VOD squad is, uh, is that still uh, uh, Owen and uh, Muffin that do the VOD squad? Uh, and then, All of right. course, ritual misery is uh, our, old, uh, our old pals there. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, meanwhile, let's take a moment and check in with the movie draft minute. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, the movie draft minute. There we go. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of October 16th, 2017. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. You know, my favorite part of the draft at this point is everybody arguing who's going to win and who's going to lose. Because as of right now, I guarantee everyone's got it wrong. So with that, let's go check the scoreboard. Team Core Killers and Frog Pants are both tied for fifth place. Still waiting for the first film. Team Champions are in fourth place with $67.6 million. Team Jury is in third place with Happy Death Day bringing $27.4 million a week. And The Foreigner bringing $14.1 million a week with their total to $82.3 million. Team Big and Tall is in second place with $100.6 million. And in first place, whopping $103.3 million, it's Team Feline. And that is your boot drive minute for the week of October 16, 2017. Team Feline, enjoy it while you can. It is not meant to last. Uh, Suburbicon might make some decent money, though. I'm actually pretty stoked about what I've seen on that. But uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, Big and Tall at 100. Ch team Champions, uh, not off to a great start. How are you feeling about your odds, Jerbs? Well, they were better. As I was actually talking to Brett about it uh, yesterday, and uh, it's about as good as we could hope. Uh, we got overperformances out of Happy Death Day. Uh, uh, American Maid didn't do fantastic, but in a, in a uh, season where everything is underperforming, it did better. Uh, the big issue now is, like, if everything is soft then the only play was to go all in for star wars you know yeah, and and yeah, that's yeah. going to be the big question is will anything just even in raw numbers be able to measure up to even an underperformance by star wars 
that's the weird part because uh, Star Wars went for the exact same amount that it went two years ago, and it looks as though I mean, there's every reasonable expectation that The Last Jedi will perform under what uh, uh, The Force Awakens did. And yeah. yet, when that was a losing play two years ago, I think the exact same play at the exact same price for a even poorer performing version of the same movie, I think will be the winning play. I, I think there's every possibility that that thing just runs away with it. Uh, yeah, you know, it's 85% of it, so they're going to get a bigger cut of, of a movie that'll probably make a little bit less. But, you know, ultimately, I think uh, we all just kind of uh, uh, decided to each shoot each other in the head because we didn't let anybody get kind of uh, a couple bigger movies together that could even do the, like, underperforming raw numbers to get close to, to where Star Wars was. Yeah, like, by the numbers, like, looking at the intricate, you know, Excel spreadsheet that Tom Merritt put together for Team Champions, I mean, on paper, all those purchases looked great, but but now, like, two movies in, and both have vastly underperformed modest expectations, and uh, I don't know how to feel about any of that. I, 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 I If I was going to bet... And as we just heard, the wise words of Roberto Villegas were all wrong. If I was going to bet, I would say that this will be the first time that we're going to have like a hundred chat realm winners, all of whom who just said Frog Pants had the right of it with The Last Jedi at 85 percent. Yeah, maybe uh, uh, that 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 is uh, very likely. But at this point, you're looking for overperformances by you're looking for like Jigsaw, the, all that old Saw magic comes back. Right. Mm, yeah. Uh, and also, America really wants to laugh with sequels because Bad Bombs Christmas and Daddy's Home 2 rocks the boat. And then also, if there's one thing the millennials love, it's uh, ancient train murder stories and uh, Murder on the Orient Express just blows not, up. Not looking good. It is not looking good. Uh, all right. But all we need is for every uh, person on Earth to go see Tyler Perry's Boo 2, a Medea Halloween. <laughs> well, thank goodness. Finally, tackling on the big holidays. Uh, hot damn, man. Uh, dude, what did we learn today, Justin Robert Young? Well, you know, we learned that um, uh, if, if, if nobody's selling uh, a sexy Angela Lansbury, then we should really get in on that. Yeah, we also learned that Brian is a coward that wilts when uh, somebody pretends to be a Sith Lord in his presence. Uh, sure, we also uh, learned that uh, postmodern jukebox pretty good. At Hot damn, dude. Hot damn. If you have any chance to go see them live, like I, I've seen their videos. It's not the same. Watch them live. Watch them live. Um I've also learned that apparently uh, the cops don't instantly descend on you when you're barking on a porch about a uh, testicle being exposed, saving you from cancer. Uh, we've also learned that Brian Brushwood's wife refused to stand up during the finale of Postmodern Jukebox's set. <laughs> she, she, she took a knee. She, she all, took a knee. Yeah, all the Brushwood family. That's fucked up. Uh, man, hot damn, but most of all, uh, we learned that, uh, that, that it's possible to have a, a good time, uh, just over Skype on an iPad as my battery dies in the last few seconds of this episode. We love you guys. Die in a fire. See you next Tuesday. Night attack. I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>